Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Our Blessed and Beautiful Life. My name is Tina. If this is your first time stopping by, welcome. Today I'm going to do a quick, simple video on how to make some dehydrated meals at home. So today's video, we're going to be doing three simple recipes. We're going to be doing Spanish chicken casserole, we're going to be doing chicken curry, and we're also going to be doing a simple beef macaroni recipe. I'm not preparing the meat today on this video. I've already done that ahead of time. I'm going to explain to you really quickly how I do that just in case you don't know. So for your beef macaroni, you're going to want some beef, obviously, some ground beef. And all you're going to do is cook that on your stovetop and brown that as you would for like, let's say, spaghetti or something like that. So brown that hamburger meat, cook it thoroughly, and then you're going to put it into a colander and you're going to strain it with warm water. And what I like to do is just spread the ground beef out on a cookie sheet and use some paper towels to press down to try and get the excess moisture out of the ground beef before I pop the, the hamburger into the dehydrator. And I dehydrate all of my meats around 155 degrees. Everybody is a little bit different and has their own preference, but about 155 degrees for about eight to 12 hours is how long you wanna dehydrate that. And for the chicken, the way that I like to prepare them for the dehydrated meals is just super simple. I just take out my crock pot, put my chicken breasts in the crock pot, cover them with water, and go ahead and simmer them on a low heat um, throughout the afternoon. And you know, you can just go on about your business and come back later and they're cooked and ready to go. So once the chicken is done cooking in the crock pot, I take the chicken out and I, you can do this a couple different ways. Some people like to shred their chicken. Some people like to cube it in about quarter inch strips and then I chop it. Um, and you'll see in a few minutes what that chicken looks like when it's dehydrated. But I don't like to do big chunky pieces of chicken or else it's gonna take a really long time for it to dehydrate. All I do when my food is done dehydrating is put them into uh, glass mason jars and then um, just set them on the shelf and they'll be good for a long time for whenever you're ready to use them. But this is what dehydrated hamburger meat looks like. I don't season my meat when I'm making it for my dehydrated meals because we're gonna add seasonings to the meals themselves when we're preparing them for packaging. And then here's what my chicken looks like. So it's kind of, kind of shredded, kind of um, sliced, and of course sometimes it breaks apart a little bit once you pull it out of the dehydrator and package it up, so totally fine, no problem. So there's a lot of dehydrators that you can get out on the market today. I have the Excalibur brand dehydrator. I bought that a few years ago and it's my absolute favorite. It's got about nine of these square trays. And so you're just gonna spread your hamburger meat out on this tray and stick it in the dehydrator or your chicken. So prep your meat ahead of time, get your meat dehydrated. Two of the recipes we're doing today call for chicken and only one of them calls for the hamburger meat. I hope you guys liked today's video. This is a super easy thing that you can do at home. If you've got a lot of meat that you wanna use up before it goes bad or some ingredients, this is a great way to do it. If you guys have any comments or questions, please leave them below. And if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell. That way you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. Okay, let's get started on our first dehydrated meal, which is going to be our chicken Spanish casserole. I've got all the ingredients laid out here except for the chicken, which I have already prepared on the side. So you're gonna start with two cups of cooked rice. It doesn't matter what kind of rice, could be brown, could be white, it doesn't matter. It just needs to be cooked rice. And then you're gonna have one cup of black beans. I like to rinse them thoroughly in a colander. And then you're gonna have about a half a cup of frozen corn. And then you're going to add about one third cup of salsa, any kind of salsa you want. And then just one can of cream of chicken soup. And all you're gonna do is add all of these ingredients into a mixing bowl and get them mixed together. And you guys, just so you know, you can double these recipes if you want. Um, I find that these ingredients listed here give me about three 
dehydrated meals. So you can double this if you want to make more. So go ahead and get this mixed up really well. And then we are going to start loading this on our dehydrator trays. So when adding your food to your dehydrator trays, there's really no trick to it. You just want to try to spread it as thin as you can so that everything dries thoroughly. That's the most important thing when you're dehydrating anything because you want to draw out all the moisture that you can so that it will last longer when you store it. So now that I've got these all loaded up, I'm going to dehydrate these at about 135 degrees for 8 to 12 hours. And this is what it looks like when they're all done. So you just want to take your time, get them off of the screens and crumple everything up so that we can prepare our packaged meals. Okay, go ahead and grab your kitchen scale. I got mine on Amazon, super cheap. I think it was less than $13. You're gonna gather your ingredients for our Spanish chicken casserole, and we're gonna start measuring everything out. So for your dehydrated meals, I usually shoot for 150 grams total per meal. 50 grams of that is my meat or my you know protein and then the rest of that's going to be my um, mix and my seasonings but 150 grams total for each meal is what i usually do so now that i've got my 50 grams of my chicken i'm going to add some of our spanish casserole mix that we made with the rice and I usually pour this until I get up to about 130 grams. Once you're up to 130 grams, you're going to add your seasonings and you're going to add a half a teaspoon of paprika, a half a teaspoon of chili, and then you're going to add just a little pinch of salt and a little pinch of pepper. Now once you're done with that, you are just going to top it off with a little bit more chicken or you could do more mix if you prefer, but you just want to bring it up to 150 grams. Now look at that you guys, that is one meal done and we're at about 151 grams so that's perfect. These are moisture absorbent packets that I bought in bulk from Amazon. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. I just like to be extra safe when I'm dehydrating my food. So I do add one packet to each one of my meals. All right, let's move on to our next recipe, which is our chicken curry. So here's the ingredients minus your chicken, of course, that's prepared on the side. You're going to need, again, two cups of cooked rice any kind of rice that you'd like as long as it's cooked. And then over here, I have about one cup of sauteed mushrooms and red bell peppers that I sauteed in a pan. And then you're also going to need a half cup of frozen peas. And then you're gonna need one cup of coconut milk. Again, you're just going to add all these ingredients to a bowl and give them a good mix. seasonings for your chicken curry you're gonna want some parsley flakes about a half a teaspoon of garlic powder a half a teaspoon of chili powder a half a teaspoon excuse me three quarters of a teaspoon of curry powder and then of course a pinch of salt and pepper
topping it off here with a little bit more chicken and a little bit more of our curry mixture to bring it up to that 150 grams. All right, beef macaroni and cheese was prepared before this video, so I'm gonna give you guys the ingredients for that on the next slide. And you're gonna cook this just the same way that we did all of our other recipes today. For your beef mac, you're gonna want some powdered milk and some powdered cheese. I buy these in bulk on Amazon. You're gonna want two tablespoons of each of these for your beef mac meals. And the full recipe for the beef macaroni and cheese, you guys, is also listed in the description. All right, and there you have it. So if you guys plan on using your meals fairly soon, you can just store these in Ziploc baggies for hiking or camping. Um, if you're gonna keep them for long-term storage, I like to vacuum seal them so that they keep better. When eating your meals to rehydrate them, all you're gonna do is put your meal in a pan and cover your meal with boiling water. And you're just gonna cover it with the lid and let it set for 15 minutes to rehydrate all the food. Sometimes we like to put ours in like a lunch box just to help insulate it while it's rehydrating, but you don't have to do that. And also, you can drizzle some olive oil in there just to add some fat back to your meal. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for hanging out with me today. We'll see you very soon.